Got started uh, probably uh, about 10 years ago, actually. I started with just a couple of Holstein steers just to uh, raise beef for my own family and uh, realized that after a couple of years of, of having steers, and we never kept them over the winter, um, so we had steers for the first couple of years and raised them for our family. That went well. Uh, I enjoyed it, and then the kids really enjoyed it too. And that's really what drove me into this side of things uh, is you know the fact that my kids really enjoy being outside and working with the animals and my daughter's thinking about being a vet so I wanted to you know help you know, promote that I've always loved the outdoors and you know loved working with with animals and, and with machinery and, and tinkering with you know mechanical things and, and building so this kind of fits the bill for all of that it's constantly you know it's it's you got to be a mechanic and a, and a carpenter and a you know a, a half witted veterinarian half the time. We kind of had a family meeting a few years ago. It's kind of funny. We, we talked about two options. It was either, you know, continue growing the farm and, and, you know, really dive into it or go buy a house on the lake somewhere and have kind of a retreat. So and I think that they probably regret their decision, but they all agreed that it would be a good idea to, to really dive headfirst into the farming side of things. So. That's what I did. It's been obviously hugely capital intensive to, to get you know to this point. We're finally starting to, to you know to reap the benefits of all the time and energy and money that we put into it. We own about 45 acres, which is mostly pasture land now, so the cows can have you know full access to that all summer long. That includes the house and the barns here. All the rest of it is fenced in pretty much to allow the cows land to graze. Right now we have about 50 head here uh, on the farm and that varies throughout the year and has been steadily increasing for the last couple of years because we've really started a breeding program over the last three years is really when we started breeding here on the farm uh, which kind of is the difference between a small hobby operation versus you know something that's that's more commercialized and kind of really looking to to make a profit versus just raising your own beef. So, and there's a lot of science and a lot of strategy that goes into the breeding side of things. Most of the animals that we have here now are Angus or Angus Cross with Hereford, which is the two you know main brief you know beef breeds. We always use a registered Angus bull, Black Angus bull, um, as our main breeder. And then we started also we bought a few registered heifers, so we do have uh, quite a few animals right here now that are uh, registered Black Angus. We're continuing to grow that side of things because obviously that those animals will not only bring more money but they're also easier to kind of keep track of as far as where they came from and you know what their lineage is and, and what their characteristics are. The science side of things has really picked up in the last year for me. I've kind of really gotten into what breeding does best and you know what type of weights to look at from, you know from birth weight to you know, weaning weight, which is when they, you know, they stop suckling on their mother, to one year weight. All of our hay is taken off of uh, all natural pastures. We don't use any artificial fertilizers and we don't use any hormones or any antibiotics here at all. Um, so we really try to make sure that we're, you know, producing an all natural product that's not stimulated to grow in any way. It's all just a natural operation. All of our feed is produced on, on all natural pastures. So we don't, we don't uh, fertilize. And we produce all what they call baleage, which is the hay that's it's grass and clover mix typically, and it's baled wet, which means that uh, you see, you know, you see all the time you're driving down the road and you see people out there tedding their hay and, and trying to dry it out and letting it sit for three or four days, and that's not that's not the way we create our feed. We will cut one day and then bale the next, and it's baled wet, so it's really high moisture content, and the equipment that we have not only bales it, but then it also wraps it in the plastic wrap and allows fermentation to happen. And that's what prevents mold and any issues with the hay itself is it's sealed, so it's not, it's airtight, so that the, you know, the air can't get to it to, to produce mold. So what that does is that allows the, the animals, not only does it maintain a higher protein percentage, but it also allows the animals to, to eat more. They, they basically, they can go in and, and they can consume more of that product versus a, a dry, you know, just a dry hay. It's, it's, a, it's a better quality feed for the animals. With a, we're up on top of the hill, wind's constantly blowing, it's cold up here. We have shelter, but it's not heated shelter all year round. So they need, you know, the best quality feed that they can have to 
be able to keep the fat on for the winter and, and to maintain body condition. We feed outside all year long, all year round. And the cows have access to the barns. In the evening, they come in, they'll come in and bed down and, and lay down in the barn overnight. But they'll eat and they spend most of their lives outside. You know, it's a much healthier environment, a lot less chance of respiratory issues and, and disease spread. So it's just that I found to be a much better habitat than trying to keep them in a barn, such as a dairy setup. But I just, it's not, I give them much more a free range environment for them. Um, it just allows them to be a much healthier, happier animal. They, they kind of come and go as they please. I'm doing it because the kids love it, because I enjoy it, my wife likes it, and we love to see the animals and, and work with the animals. You know, we want to make sure that they're you know, healthy and happy, and uh, you know, that whole process goes smoothly.